Step into the latest installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast number 70 titled Second Esdras 5, The Collective Pursuit of Truth, featuring Mike from COT on the N Generation Project. Originally aired on May 13, 2024, exclusively on counciloftime.com. This episode goes into Bible study highlighting eschatology amidst today's challenges. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore these peculiar circumstances in this riveting episode. To understand more, visit the Council of Time on their only official website linked in description. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction who simultaneously is seeking God's guidance. Your support drives our mission to guide individuals toward truth, sobriety, and preparedness for what is described in scripture as perilous times. Join our exclusive locals community for EGP family members and have early access to many cool things. Thank you for being a vital part of the success of the End Generation Project. Before finally delving into today's rebroadcast podcast, Second Esdras 5, The Collective Pursuit of Truth, Episode 70. We wanted to take a moment to address our absence and explain why we've been off the radar for a while. Running a YouTube channel comes with its challenges, and unfortunately, the costs associated with maintaining it became quite high for us. Additionally, we recently underwent a significant move, which further disrupted our ability to create content. However, we're excited to announce that we're back and ready to dive into new episodes with you all. We're thrilled to present our latest installment, episode number 70, Second Esdras 5, The Collective Pursuit of Truth, and we can't wait to share it with you. We appreciate your patience and understanding during this hiatus, and we're grateful for your continued support. Stay tuned for more exciting content coming your way, and thank you for being part of our community. All right? Now, let's dive into today's podcast, Second Esdras 5, The Collective Pursuit of Truth. Tune in to the rebroadcast of End Generation Projects podcast number 70 with Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Okay, everybody. I am back. If you guys don't mind, let me go turn on the uh, fan here. It is quite the snowy place and hot here. All right, well, let me give you guys an update in a few areas, and I hope that you guys don't mind the direction I'll take some of these subjects as we go through Revelation. Make sure everybody's on board with that. Listen, it's happening. Guys, it's happening. It is. I was, you know, since the, this solar flare activity, Bad reminder, for me at least, because of what it entails. You guys remember some of the clips, right? People are doing exactly, exactly. They're starting to begin exactly what they were doing in that, what was shown, the colors in the skies. So I turned on the television today, and that's pretty hard, right? It's pretty hard to turn on a TV. Anyway, I did it by way of the internet and looked at some of the uh, news channels. Every single news channel echoed the same thing. They were talking about the sky. Now, that may seem mundane to most because you may not know about a specific topic we had here at COT. Somehow, to be honest with you, it was very disturbing for me, both when I saw it, when it happened, when it was given to me. And we've had, you know, we've had people take pictures of the skies before. But every single time a marker happens, you guys have markers too, every single time, it it, it just drops my stomach. It troubles me deeply. And while everybody else is, you know, looking at the skies and saying how beautiful the auroras were and how far you could see the auroras, Right? It's very eerie to me. In this dream a long time ago, some people say, I remember you talking about it. Yes, because even in the dream, they didn't understand. I was in front of a house going out, and people were taking pictures of the skies, trying to get a picture of the skies, right? After work, 
after work. And um, that's exactly what was happening. These people were desperately trying to get those pictures, right? So today, specifically today, and it's never really hit me, but, well, you know, we've had this before, right? We've had it before. And somebody said we didn't get any too far south. Well, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia had some. Uh, if you had a drone, you could see it from Florida. That's pretty far south. And people thought it was cute. Pretty. They don't understand what that entails. Right? In the dream, they were all out through the skies, and that's what people were waiting for. Keep in mind, hear me on this. In this same dream, there was a documentary on television. Please hear me on this. Of whales orcas, whatever they were, inverted. I've seen that documentary. It's going to be on, I believe it's going to be on the History Channel, Discovery Channel, one of those channels. Where the whales are inverted. Guess what's below the whales? Anybody know what's below the whales? It's near the ruins. It's it's like um, Roman ruins underneath the water. That's what's down there. I could not, I'm going to be honest, I couldn't believe when I saw it, right? Um, Come to find out that's how they sleep. Like that, right? That's how they sleep. But for it to be so specific, when they're doing the investigation, of the underground ruins uh, of these uh, in the ocean ruins, because you guys know at the end of this stream, that pyroclastic flow came from the oceans and burnt up everything. You know that. So something blew in the oceans, right? Oh, that's not all. And believe me, listen, I'm not, I I don't want you guys to get the wrong, don't get the wrong picture. Like I'm patting myself on the back. Listen to me carefully. Dreams are just dreams. That's it. They're just dreams. All right. Even if the Lord gives somebody a dream, it's still just a dream until the Lord has that thing come out. It does not promote a person. And it shouldn't promote a person in anybody's eyes if every dream a person has comes true. It shouldn't. Always remember that if truth enters into this world, it comes through us. We are not the source. I'm not the source of my own dreams, should they turn out to be true. Please remember that. So don't look at me like something. there's something special about me. I can assure you it is not. Right? But don't look at me that way. If anything... If it comes true and if it helps you, just thank God that somebody in the body of Christ uh, saw something before it came, which led to your confidence in dealing with this situation or having a heads up for this situation, please. But don't don't see it any other way. Okay, I'm I'm, sometimes I'm reluctant to say things. But for that very reason, people tend to worship people. They do. They should never do that. So please keep that in mind. But you guys also know about that dream, that the people were, in this dream, they were doubled up in houses, it seemed. A lot of kids had come home to roost with their parents, and people had come back. You know, that very thing is happening. The very thing is happening. And the fish under the underpasses, it's been happening for a long time. Right? Um... But that's not all. You guys know about the stone steps. I do not know what archive it's in. But here's what I'll do. I'll get with the um, admins, with with, uh, Flash in particular, and and find out which one it is so that you guys can hear it. The very first one, okay? Um, I'll put a link to that just in case you can't find it or something like that. I'll put a link to that. We'll coordinate that and get that link out there so that people can, you know, hear parts of it. But that very thing seems to be happening. Have you looked in the streets this weekend? Do you guys understand what's happening? Do you understand that a phase of terrorism, an an actual operation, is in play within the USA? You understand it's going to get worse, right? For example, these Palestinian protesters. And let me let me open your eyes to something. We are human beings. A human being that does not know Christ has no focal point, center point. They're they're, they're going to be very passionate about something. It is unfortunate that Satan usurps 
everything that could potentially be good. He will usurp it and use it for chaos. It's what he's done with Palestine and Israel. Don't let don't let Satan's plans, his his activities, don't let it get into you and cause you to hate the people he's working through. Always seek to have those people free. Please keep that mindset. That's what we're here for. We're not here to take sides and to point fingers at who Satan operates through. That's not why we're here. We're here to break his doings in this earth. To essentially break his back. To break the works of Satan in this earth. That's what Christ came for. And if Christ be within us, that's what we're here for. We're not here to destroy humanity or anybody Satan would pollute. We're here to free the world of that pollution. That's a continuation of the gospel. As our Lord has already established, and we must remember never to get off that path. Because if we do, you're going to sow seeds of violence. You're going to sow seeds of judgment. And you will be judged prematurely. And violence will come straight to your house prematurely. And if that happens, it doesn't matter how many armaments you have. You will be overcome by whatever activity you're doing in this earth. That's in context of what I'm saying. Remember that. It's inescapable. We all know about the stone steps. With the stone steps, people were so angry at one another. Implacable. You couldn't make peace with them. You couldn't. Right now, that same thing is happening. You know, there were dozens of cases of people being punched in New York. There were 17 dozen cases of people being punched in Chicago. There were 36 incidences in Florida, or not Florida, but um, Dallas, Texas, of something similar. There were approximately 200, 219 reports of teenagers who were ready to do great harm to people in the U.S. this weekend alone. This weekend alone. Th- those numbers are growing. And of course, they didn't catch everybody. There are people who are so enwrapped, enthralled with this Hamas and the people of Gaza. They are so taken by the rhetoric. They're ready to give their lives. That's a fact. They're ready to give their lives to exact vengeance upon the USA. That's happening right now. And it's growing. At first, it was, it was just communications. Harmless communications that nobody could prosecute. It's just harmless. Do you not know how many... There have been people prosecuted over this. They cannot catch them all. That means people are ready to die for somebody else's ideology right here in the USA. Do you understand it's causing a rip? Is causing Americans to turn against it. But one of the most, one of the saddest things is when Americans turn against Americans. Why do I say that? Because America is a household, just like Europe is a household, just like Asia is a household. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to the Father for the household. In the Bible, we have a standard. All those who believe in Christ should also have this standard. Charity starts at home. You don't turn your back on your family members. You intercede and pray for your family members. If they won't cure you, you can pray for them. When you pray, angels are dispatched to do the work of God in the earth. And your prayers support that work. If you start fighting against those who were in America because they were overcome by some dark spirit and they adopted an ideology which was sown by a dark spirit, all you're doing is you're fighting everybody that Satan has already gotten to. That goes for politics too. You guys are on earth to change all this stuff. Who can the Lord send if we're all wrapped up in somebody else's politics? You're kings and priests. You're to write letters to insert yourselves in Congress if you have to, to put a halt to it. That's who you are. So, I tend to go over all the prophecies of many civilizations. And if we took away the heaven, the heavenly things, 
and just focused on what was happening in the earth. Getting real. I'm going to read some of you guys out of, uh, if you don't mind, just go over something with you guys so you can see. Because we are there. We're not getting close to anything. It's happening in our lifetime, and it's starting to accelerate. Do you know you're, you're also tonight, right now, it's tonight's the 13th. Tonight is the dawn of a brand new war. Armies are ready to engage. An insurgency has happened. Unfortunately. And Israel, according to prophecy, they're going to fight, but they won't win by conventional means. You do understand by the word of God, they do not win by their military. They are overcome by their military. They only win through the intervention of the Most High. Let me read this to you guys real quick. Just so everybody is clear on that. I'm going to read this to you guys real quick. Listen, all these, all of these were taken from Estras. The sun shall, sh- shall, shall shine in the night. The sun will shine in the night. The moon also will shine three times in the night. Blood will drop out of wood. Stones will sing. That's already starting to happen. People will be troubled. People will rule that the people will not be looking for. So you're going to have leaders that people would not usually pick. That's already happening. Sodomish, the Sodomish sea shall cast out her fish and make a noise in the night that many have not known. That's already happened, not not in the not in the Dead Sea, but it's already happened in other places, so they know that's possible. Confusion will be in many places. Fire shall be sent shall oft be sent out again. Right now, Canada is burning. In fact, we have a smoke alert here in the USA because of the smoke in Canada. It's about to get very dry in a lot of places in the USA. Those fires will soon be here in the USA. I would go so far as to say three quarters of the USA will likely be smoky. It's going to be on fire. It's going to burn. I'm greatly concerned about the thousand people I saw cut off in in this village. and They couldn't get out and they all died. One thousand people died in one night. Nobody, you know what, let me pause. Nobody in their right mind would ever ask the Lord to show them anything like that. And I'm not an imaginative person. In other words, you know, some people think up scenarios, right? I had to be ready for all scenarios. But I don't sit up and think up things like that. Now, I share these on a private basis with a few people, with my inner circle sometimes. And it's, it's, it's strange because a lot of them say we should share that with everybody else. Well, why? Because it comes true. And I said, no. Suppose anybody out there on the Internet were to say 10 things and all 10 things came true in 10 days. Now, what do you think would happen to that person? They would see it as some big deal. It is not a big deal. That's the Lord being gracious to us. There are also scriptures. Even when the Lord shows a person the truth. Do you not know there are scriptures where the Lord says, now will you do the right thing? Now that I have put the truth in you, will you do the right thing? So don't think because the Lord gives you the truth that somehow you're, you're, you're exempt from still seeking holiness and being obedient. You're not. You're held to a higher standard. Anybody held to a higher standard is going to be punished seven times more severely than the average person. Keep that in mind. I just want to say that. Let me continue. Wild beasts will change their places. Menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Salt water will be found in fresh water. Friends will destroy one another. Wit will hide itself. That means people are going to have a loss of courage. A loss of courage. Friend, or I'm sorry. Understanding will withdraw itself into secret chambers. And will be sought by many. That's already happening too. People can't see. Listen, here's how here's how things work. And I tend to uh, I like to work along with it. When big things happen, everybody has an explanation. Everybody has a narrative. 
I have to wait till things absolutely fail so I can utter again what the Lord said in his word. Have you guys noticed that when something big happens, all of a sudden, everybody has an interpretation of it? Well, God has an interpretation too. And I'd rather have God's interpretation of things than anybody else's. Anybody else's. When it says understanding is going to withdraw itself in the secret chambers or be sought by many, it is expanded in the book of Esdras. That's expanded to a great deal. It was talking about scriptures. It was talking about a person's willingness uh, uh, to be integral, even in, you know, when nobody is looking. It's talking about a heart change that will take place within people. Right before a massive exposure of things, as was talking about. That's happening. That is happening. Understanding is not acting in what seems to be right. Understanding is having wisdom, real wisdom. Not earthly, this earthly made up stuff, but real wisdom. Unrighteousness will be multiplied upon the earth. That's something. One land will talk, will ask another and say, is righteousness that makes a man righteous gone through thee? And it shall say no. It'll be an inquiry. People will ask, do you guys know what that is? One land also will ask another and say, is righteousness that makes a man righteous gone through thee? Has it gone through thee? And the other land will say, no, it has not. Do you know what that is? People are going to ask have they had a very special encounter? They're going to wonder who has had this special encounter. It says, men will hope, but nothing obtained. Dreams. They'll have great dreams. But poverty and a brokenness will begin to consume everything. You know, that happens right now. How many kids go to high school? They want to be a football player. Uh, me personally, I can't stand it, filling up a bunch of kids' heads with that idea, knowing that one or two people are going to make it and everybody else is going to fail. And they go over the success stories. What they don't deal with is the brokenness it leaves behind. It leaves a trail of brokenness behind them. It does. Because you have all these students who have it in their heads, they're dreaming, oh, yes, I'm going to make it big. A lot of them get injuries. Many don't quite make it academically. Some are not smart enough. Even some who do make it may be taken advantage of financially. Maybe they're given money too, too early and they don't have enough wisdom to carry it out. So they end up going to jail with millions. It is a tragic thing on TV. All they show are the glory moments. They do not show the tragedy. It leaves behind. It leaves broken people because when they don't make it as an athlete, they are depressed. They feel, they feel useless because everybody filled up their heads with dreams and not reality. You know what? The truth is this. You can go for sports. You can go for whatever you want to go for. But look, at least explain to the kids. Maybe two out of every four senior classes will make it. The rest will not. You need to tell them that so they understand the odds. They need to encourage a backup. Hmm? Some sort of backup, but they won't do it. They won't do it. Men will labor, but the ways shall not prosper. You know what that means? No matter what a person does, something is always going to pop up and happen. That's happening in people's lives right now. When you can save up, save up, save up, something takes place. If you have kids, if you save up $5,000, somebody's going to have an injury. That cost, medical bills are going to cost you $5,000. Something will always happen to take whatever extra you have. If you don't believe me, you can have $200 in your wallet or purse, and somebody you know is going to need $200. It never fails. It happens. But this, these are from the book of Esdras. The book of Baruch goes even further to let people know the sequence of things and how they will all... One of the purposes of end times events is that the average person will not be able to track them. They're invisible to the world. Invisible. But these things are happening now. They're already happening. Somebody said, is it true that Iran gave Hamas the green light to begin an all-out war against Israel? They already encouraged that when they attacked them the first time. 
have an understanding of that. That's why Hamas was fed so many weapons. But they could not do it. But they're not going to do it either until the Lord says do it. Here's how, according to the book of Daniel, I believe in the book of Daniel, here's what we're facing. You're going to have these groups that will try Israel. Because it's not as the former. It's a little different, right? It's a little more robust. They're going to be able to put down just about every single assault. But then, but then, all these nations will combine their armies. When they combine their armies with a combined force, that's a force multiplier, right? They will go into Jerusalem and take it and set up the abomination that makes it desolate. That happens with a combined force. That's according to the book of Daniel. That's according to the book of uh, uh, Zechariah. That's according to the book of Revelation. And they'll occupy 40 and two months. They're pushed back quite a few times as they probe. I also believe that America has to be dealt with before they can fully go into that land. Now, there are lots of ways to tie the hands of Americans. I used to say this a lot. In, what year was that, guys? 2000. 11, 12, somewhere around there. That America had to have their hands tied or that prophecy really won't come true. Look what's happening to Americans right now. You could almost say it's show and tell time. When all the lies are going to go away, here's what's going to be painful, so let me share it with you guys. When people think their country is robust and can withstand certain things, and they ultimately find out it's not the way they said it was, that's going to be a very painful day. Very painful day. When people find out that a lot of what these countries talk about is propaganda and not truth. Remember something, the hungry, the person who is steadfast and hungry, those are the people that grow. If we ever get fat, even with the knowledge of our father, we're going to lose our position. We will. Because that's when you stop searching so much. That's when you stop developing so much. Right? That's when you're not hungry anymore. And you say, I got, well, I got time to wait. I have time to wait. Somebody says, Mike, you mentioned earlier about being punished. So if we get to heaven, what will be the punishment? Like less important roles? Are? No, I don't believe that. Listen, if a person goes into the eternal realm, number one, you're not going to be able to compare it with anything down here. I'm, the worst position in God's eternal realm, right? would be a dream come true to anybody on earth, to any life form, period. Think about that, right? I don't believe we will be able to see, actually see what's higher and lower. We'll recognize most high. We're not going to care about what's higher and lower. We're going to be in the, the realm of truth, of absolute truth, right? Now, I've not been there before, but I did have an experience. And in this experience, the only thing I perceived was truth, an absolute love, and absolute love was nothing like this love they talk about here on earth. No, absolute love is a is a impenetrable power. I mean, it's raw power, and everything in it is straightforward. There's nothing secret, nothing hidden, nothing withheld, and because nothing is withheld, and all things are known. There's a very high order to it, but I don't believe our perception in the eternal is going to be anything like it is here. These bodies limit us. These are limiters. They keep you in this realm of uh, ignorance, you could say, right? Your brain, your body decays. It's very slow. Even boxers, for example, boxers and people who do, I used to do kickboxing a lot, right? You get into a mode where everything starts to look like it's in slow motion, as, as a fact, which means your brain is operating so fast, Right? that everything looks like it's in slow motion. I remember I saw a person do a combination and, and, and it looked surreal. It just didn't look real. It looked like I could have, you know, hit this person 20 times before they got their foot up in the air. It looked like it was in slow motion. People who were in car accidents, same thing, right? Same thing. They remember things being in slow motion. Well, your body is a limiter. Imagine how fast you would think outside of these limitations called flesh. Just think about that. So that really changes the nature of the eternal realm. Everything is different then. Everything is different. Um, so that comparison with the heavens, right? I tend to leave that alone. 
I do. I believe what the word says. I believe what Jesus says. I do. I do not believe what man has seen. I just don't do it. I don't believe what I've seen half the time. Just don't do it. But I tend to leave that alone. I'll tell you why. That experience had me, it almost made me reject everything here. And I came back with a gift for about 10 days or so. And that was to hear the intent of a person. It was the weirdest, most accurate thing I've ever had happen in my life. When you can hear the heart of a person, but their lips are saying something else. And I was answering based on the heart, which was messing people up, right? Left a kind of residue on it. Yeah, it did. In fact, when you have certain experiences like that, there's no way in the world you're ever going to put God in the box and make him like humanity, which is what a lot of people have done. It's comfortable for humanity to think of God in a humanistic way. Right, Like God needs this or he has to do this. God doesn't have to do anything and he doesn't need anything. He loves us. Right, Time is for us so that we can perceive things and reflect upon things. Why? He already wrote about that. I'm shocked that a lot of people don't really come across that. But he already told us about time. Right? Now, of course, you got to be careful of Satan. Satan has whispers. Here's what I mean by a whisper. Suppose somebody comes and they say, well, you know, I'm from the future. Right? Do you know how many Christians actually believe that there is, that, that people have time traveled? They actually believe that. To what benefit will that be of anybody? None. It's entertainment to search out search such things. It really is. Even if you found out there were time travelers, what would that do to help you change anything in the earth? Nobody would believe you anyway. So even if you have this extraordinary knowledge base being on this earth, right? You would not be able to do anything with it. People have tried, and it does not work. Because you end up wasting your time. Now, would God have us waste our time? No, he would not. So why would he tell us something that's not going to contribute to a person's spiritual fight on this earth? If it's not going to contribute to a person being saved. See, we need Christ. People are dying of the soul. They need Christ. It is a plague of sin going around this earth. There's also a plague of self-righteousness going around this earth. There are deceits everywhere. God's, everything God said about giving a person over to a reprobate mind is coming to pass. That happens to believers. I hope you guys know that. Judgment starts in the house of God, not the world, in the house of God. It begins with us. Now that you're in a time where everything is about to go off, you're going to find a lot of people have loose footing. They weren't ready for this time. People have been given warnings for all my life. You're going to see a great many people are not prepared for what's coming. They're still arguing about what's out there in space. They are. The earth's view is blocked, and the moon is cracked, and the sky is a pinkish haze. When people are drawing from lotteries to go into safe places, which are covered by sand, and when it's going to seem hopeless for the rest of the people, anybody here is going to understand then that God gave them a lifetime to prepare in truth. And yet man still wanted to be entertained when every moment of their lives was given out of love. Many continually threw it away. Not one person will have an excuse. Not one of us will be able to say, I didn't have enough time. Yes, we did. But we keep pursuing these imaginative things and tangible things of the earth. One of the greatest wars in earth, does anybody know what one of the greatest spiritual wars is right now on this earth? Anybody know? It's a war in which humanity is losing miserably every single day. Do you know what it is? And it's going to hurt people in the long run. And it is enough to get people to pause and not get out of certain places when the Holy Spirit gives them the unction to do so. Does anybody know what that is? And it's spiritual. It's a thousand percent spiritual. Anybody know what that is? Let's put it this way. It's going to change the identity of people, and it is the reason people, most people 
alter their plans in life. It is because of that. It's what many cannot suffer the loss of. Anybody know what that spiritual war is? You ready? Materialism. Stuff. Stuff. Do you hear me? Stuff. Stuff. You take away everything a person owns. Who are they? Who are they? Who is a person when they have nothing? Who are they? For the most part, they're someone different. People are fooling themselves right now. Their confidence is in their stuff. Without their stuff, who are they? It's just like a person in a, in a hostile territory. The only comfort they have is a, is a weapon. They say, well, at least I can protect myself. But what if you don't have that weapon? Who are you then? Where's your confidence then? If you're in a hostile area and you have nothing to protect yourself with, who are you then? That's what mankind must find out. See, God desires us to have the truth, right? Hear me on this. You don't have to believe it, but it does not matter. Just keep living and you will experience this. All of us will. God doesn't want us given over to fantasies and falsehoods and everything else. He certainly does not want us to lose our souls over things that are not real in the first place. So all deceptions, all deceptions must be disclosed. How's that going to happen? It's just like when the Lord says, everything done in secret, right, is going to eventually come out in the open. A lot of people say, yes, we are to expose somebody else. They missed the whole point. They're missing it. See, what's happening is happening right before your eyes. Everybody knows that in the last 10 years, people have been coming out the closet like crazy, correct? Everybody knows that. Why have people been coming out in the first place? After all those years of suppressing who they desire to be, all of a sudden they're coming out. Now, coming out is not coming out to be who you really are. No. Coming out is coming out to does to exercise something you want to exercise or to become something you want to become. But why now? Why now? Why all of a sudden, all of a sudden, especially in the legal system, are known liars speaking the truth about their lies and everything else? Why now? And no, we're not talking about Michael Cohen. But why now? I've noticed in court proceedings, there are a lot of people who were incredible witnesses. They now, now, incredible means they were not credible, right? They were not credible. All of a sudden, they're credible again. Why? Because they're telling everything. Why? Why are they coming out now? Why are people coming forward now? Even it's happening to the children. Have you guys noticed that kids... As soon as they hit, if you have a small child, when that kid hits the age of three or four, they cannot stand a liar. Have you noticed? They cannot take lies. Has anybody seen that phenomena? Have you guys seen that phenomena? When they hit the age of three or four, they hate people who lie. And they can see right through them. And they voice their opinion about the lies. I'm starting to see that in too many places. I'm also starting to see that among criminal people, right? Among bad people overseas. They do not care to tell people exactly what they are. See, God told us something. He did. He said, no one can utter a lying word before him. That came through, that came through the apostles, correct? I came through the prophets too. No one has an ability to lie to God the Father. Right? Everybody's going to speak truth upon his presence. Why? Because every dark influence that would allow someone to conceal anything or to lie is going to be non-existence. It does not exist in his presence. No one can utter a lying word before him. No one. So what happens as these end times in his presence consolidates and gets closer and closer. And when I say consolidation, when you read in scripture, you're going to find out 
that all the gifts exercised by a great many people in the earth, right? Because that is the power of the holy people being distributed throughout the earth. There will come a time when the Lord is right here on this, when he's with us. There'll be no need for prophecy anymore. And no one will prophesy. Why? Because Christ will be here. There'll be no need for these supernatural things that people do. That will bring somebody to Christ. Why? Because the source will be here. And when the source is here, we will live by that source. We'll be partakers of it. But there'll be no need for a man to go out there and prophesy anything. No need. So there'll be no fake power nowhere. It'll all be consolidated. All of it. Only shared by those who are truly his, his, his new family. Right? Anyway, I'll tell you that neat factor because it says during that time if anybody is going to say that they're a prophet or a preacher or something like that they're going to be killed an order will go out to kill anybody who prophesies because they're lying that'll go out too I just find that to be amazing because all too often we really act like we have a grip on what's in store and these small foundational things we have long forgotten and if we're not careful imagination will have its way and then people come up with this end times paradigm that's not even real which is what's happening now what like things you have how many people find it hard to believe in a binary system and it's true a lot of people do some people find it impossible to believe in a nibiru but what does the bible say the word describes the whole things to us it describes two things about the moon that's hardly ever uttered because when it comes to things like that, people say, well, you know, that's metaphorical. All because they're not exposed to certain truths in the earth. All because of that. Kind of like this UFO topic, right? Kind of like a werewolf topic. Something like that. You'd hear that term. you say, oh, that's by the movies. Why did they even come up with that? Why would Satan, because God didn't inspire mankind to write a werewolf movie. He did not. So let me ask you this. Where did that come from? Why would Satan inspire anybody to write a movie like that, to write a book like that, to tell a story like that? Why? Did it come from him? It didn't. Here's, you know what it came from? The days of the Nephilim. And then it was inspired to mock it. You know why people don't believe in such things? Because they have come up with these weird theories in the earth. Nobody knows what to believe. Is there upright walking canines? Is that a truthful thing? Let me share this with you. A day will come soon. And you'll thank God you never saw anything that was really upon this earth. Kind of like Leviathan and Behemoth. A lot of people think those are spiritual things. That's what they think. Yet they have no idea about that impenetrable lake in the ocean. The density is so high, you can stand on it. You cannot sink into it. They have tried to put everything down there. They put solid, compressed metal balls down there, hoping it would sink. It's not. It's not dense enough. Now, how can that not be dense enough? Can anybody explain that? Do you know how tightly packed steel molecules are in the first place? And you mean to tell me the density of that steel is not enough to break the buoyancy of that stuff down there? Oh, and it's real. It's probably why NASA abandoned their underwater research. You know that that's how they began, underwater. And they totally abandoned that. And they did make that statement. It's far safer to go into outer space. But it is to go into the depths of the ocean. They're the ones that made that comment. And that was a gaffe, a mistake of somebody who was speaking out of grave discern, of great uh, concern. They won't share that with people. They left the bottom of the ocean alone for reason, for good reason. Because that's where the trouble's coming from. People are starting to give you guys hints on the internet about those troubles. And we're talking about flesh and blood troubles. Anyway, because people don't see that, they can't believe anything based on that premise. When it comes to things you don't know about, absolutely, my advice is to leave those things to the people who know about them.
honestly. Right? I can't talk about subjects I don't have a hands on. I have to have seen something to be passionate about it or else I feel like a forgery talking about it. I don't talk about every subject dealing with UFOs. There are two specific subjects in the UFO topic I'll speak about at length. That time hasn't come yet, but it's right around the corner. The rest of that stuff, I'll leave it alone because I haven't seen it. I don't know if it's real or not. Spiritual things. I have to be an experiencer of spiritual things where I have no confidence with it. I can read it all day, but until I'm qualified with it, I cannot handle it. Anyway, because I don't want you guys falling victim to what they're doing in the world. You have people making up rule sets on how to handle demons. And they're making a grave mistake. Anger is a fingerprint of dark forces. And all those people who make up these rule sets, who are not victorious over their own anger, are making a grave mistake. See, the Lord gave us a warning. He did. You know what he said? If a man cannot bridle his tongue, that man's religion is vain. Religion is something you believe in. That's what Jesus said. Do you guys hear that? Do you guys know that? He said that. That man's religion is vain. But people won't listen to that. Strange thing. In other words, if you're following a way where you will have no control over your own emotions, there's no power in whatever you're following. Somebody said, Mike, you mentioned earlier about being punished. So if we go, I already answered that. I already answered that question. Did you miss it? Did you guys miss it? You miss it? Somebody said, you mentioned earlier about being punished. So if we go to heaven, what will be the punishment? Like less important roles in the kingdom. And my answer to that question was, I don't cover things in the kingdom like that. That is for God to decide. He didn't give that to mankind. I personally believe there's no, there's going to be little to no comprehension of positioning in the kingdom because it's so far different from what we have now. Right? And the truth be told, we don't have experience in the kingdom. People say they have, but I have a problem with that. Because a word says something very specific. And either the people, right? Either the people who are telling such things about what they saw in the heavens are wrong, or the Bible is a lie. Man, you guys got to make your own choice. But I believe in the word of God, my dear. So I can't, you know, I'm not the guy for that one. Somebody was asking about Nebraska, we'll eventually cover Omaha. Actually, you'll eventually see. But don't don't worry about it. Don't get nervous about it. See, some things are best. Some things are best divulged when they're shown because they have a full context. All too often, if I say something too early that I know about for a fact, I say it too early, it's almost like people never heard it in the first place. It is. You know how many people will say, um, Mike didn't say so-and-so. He said so-and-so. They go back and listen to the archives and they say, oh, no, he did say so-and-so. He didn't say that. He said what was in the archives. So you've got to be, because I already know about that. I'm not going to join in with the noise of entertainment, right? Uh, my, my centric focus, my center focus is on those things of the Lord. For example, not one of you should be broken here. Not one. Certainly nobody in here should be heartbroken. Nobody in here should be unsure about their salvation. Nobody in here should be have depression in their life. Not one of you should be lacking anything at this point in time. Now, what did God promise? What did he promise? By his way and his word, you know what he promised? The true promise. And there's no need to dance around it. He said that you would have those things corrected. Do you hear me? So if they're not corrected, then the word is not flowing in those areas in your life. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. If somebody is broken, there's an absence of the spirit of the Lord in that person's life. The absence of the spirit of the Lord happens where there's an absence of the word. So if we sit around and, and, and you know, if the world keeps playing around, getting away from the words of Yahshua HaMashiach, 
And they're, they're complicit with not having a healing. They're complicit with being broken internally. They're complicit with all these things. Then life will continue to degrade as it does now. Your life is not to degrade. Your people have authority. A peculiar people. A royal priesthood. Full of authority. You're the ones God gave that position back to that Adam lost. You're not to be incomplete. You're to be completed. You're not to be empty. You're to be full. And you're to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus said, I give you my peace. That's what he said. So let me ask you this. Why in the world are we settling for less than that? There's no formula to get that either. There is no formula. There's no, you don't meet certain criteria before you get that. Everybody who ever said that is hogwash. God can bestow righteousness upon anybody he so pleases. And you are favored among all those in the world. So what's the problem? What is the problem? Well, he already told us the problem. He didn't. Here's a question. though: How many people really want to be entertained? And how many want our father's truth? Not the truth. Anybody can say, I want the truth. Forget about the truth. Do you want your father's truth or not? Because I want his truth. He is. I know all the consequences of having the stuff in the world. There are consequences for that. I already know that. What about the father's truth? What about healing? What about gaining that position back, having that internal confidence? How about somebody, one of you, wake up one day, look at everything and say, God made a beautiful world. Because that's what you see. Not there's death all around. How many can look into the darkness but still see the Father's hand to be thankful? See, that's very difficult if you're an entertainment person. If your eyes are earthly eyes, all you're going to see is death, doom, and damnation. That's it. And that's what your conversation is about. Do you not know that whatever you talk about the most is what you're running over with? Do you know that? And because of that one principle... You can know everybody on the face of the earth by the conversation they have on a continuous basis. One of those who can look into the darkness and see light. I don't look and say, well, that person ought to be punished. And that one, I'm not looking for that. Because in truth, all of us need to be punished. And not one of us deserves life. All of us have messed up. Didn't we? But through Christ, we have life. That's an act of great mercy. And it's a gift. We're not owed life, and we forget that. We act like we're entitled to it. We're entitled. We, we, we walk around with this spirit of entitlement like somehow God owes us something. So we can be so careless in what we do. Our thanks level goes down, which is why we have this person-person contention going on all the time. Because I'll tell you something. Whoever is thankful for what God has delivered them from, I can assure you they're not looking to persecute anybody in the earth. No, no. See, once you once you experience your father's deliverance, you will seek that same deliverance upon the worst of the people of the earth. You know how people point at people out there in the world? They point. They say, you know, those people aren't any good. Somebody wrote me a letter and they said, Mike, why don't you just, you know, you, this person knows me. They said, well, you know, some, you know, you know who, you know, why don't you just, you know, say they're bad. But mind you, this person, well, they don't know me that well. I'll tell you why I don't do that. Why some of you get aggravated. Why don't point fingers? Let me tell you why the Lord changed all of that with one mission. Do you know that? I have some guys with me. We go on patrol. And you know how gentlemen are when they're under you. You know you know what they're doing. You know who's worth something, who's not. You can predict what they're going to do in certain situations. And one I had pegged, and I had to get on more than others. There's always somebody like that, right? Well, this person, I had little, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence in. I didn't. I did not. Anyway, we got into trouble one night, one evening, right before sunset, we got into some trouble. We got into a, some firefight trouble. As we got into trouble, out of all the correction, out of all the times this guy has messed things up, this guy has filled out the wrong forms, this guy failed to do specific things at specific times, costing us uh, evaluation points and everything else, 
right? Decreasing our readiness rating, almost getting, you know, having me get chewed out because of him a lot, right? So I had no stock in this guy at all. I didn't think well of this guy. If I looked at this guy, I could find a thousand flaws. And I wanted to shout that out to the world. We get out there in this firefight. This guy swings into action. This guy gets hurt. And he does not back down. This guy did everything right when nobody else would. This guy gave it his all. In that small moment, it's the first time I ever saw that person. And who I saw in that moment was that real person. I'm not, I won't go any further than that, but just so you understand this, you're not going to know who anybody is until the great trial comes in whatever form it comes in. I will never sit there and point at a person and say that they're garbage or anything else. I did that before and I was dead wrong. I was wrong. That guy lost his life saving our butts. And that was the first time I ever saw that person. From that day, I'll never evaluate a person just by looking at them, just by looking at things over time, just by hearing what they have done and how many things they messed up. I'll never evaluate a person that, like that. That's not who they are. You only get to see a person at the time of the trial. I'll never do another human being like that again. Never. That changed everything that day. So that's why. I'm not going to point at someone because everybody else doesn't like the person and me not like them too based on somebody else's lip service. No, because I won't be wrong in that area again. That was unfair to that guy. I saw who he really was because people were looking at the surface deeds of this person. They never, never thought to look deeper. That was the, that was the bravest person I had ever known. That was a person of great integrity and strength. And his resolve was absolute. And no one told him that prior to that moment. And they could not tell him that after. So I'll never make that mistake again. Never. Because you don't know who anybody is till that moment comes. I've seen loyal people turn into treasonous rats with the snap of a finger. The trial and the trials of life demonstrate who a person is. Because when a person starts to save themselves, that's it for me. Now you can see what that person is. It didn't matter who they are outside of that trial. The crucible is when they're in trouble. That's when you know who a person is. Until then, everybody can act. They can play the part, and I'll never fall for that again. Never. To a degree, all of you know that too, that people play a role until the day comes when they do not get what they want, and then you find out painfully who they truly are. Isn't that true? So, in fact, the Lord sends us the most awesome opportunities for wisdom. It's up to us to analyze them in truth, to see them for what they are, and to grow from them, and to actually make change in our lives based on them. And I'll never join in with the voices of this world. Now you know the answer. I'll be back in a minute right here at COT, everybody. All right, we're back. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys something else. I want you guys to keep this under your hats. You guys remember, the last last one I'm going to tell you guys is the one about the Russians. You guys remember that? Twice I had that dream about the Russians. Here, so here it is. Here it is. Because it never made sense. I was in this house, and evidently I was going about my normal course of business, and soldiers start popping up now they didn't have name tags or anything right and they spoke english they were very nice and i wanted to ask them what were they doing there something told me that you know kind of mind your business i want to know what were they doing there and they were like you were just taking surveys and things like that they were coming up with all sorts of it you know they were real nice nice and accommodating they really were. So, you know, no big concern. They stayed there. But they kept multiplying. They kept building up. Well, this one day, I, I, I remember hearing them talk Russian. And I said, wait a minute. So I go out 
And I look, these guys were setting up these, they looked like little survey things all over the place. And again, they held to that story. Well, then one day, I looked out, I went out my front door and looked to the left. And I saw guns, big guns, artillery guns sitting out there. The sun was rising. They were pointed in the direction of the sun. And I remember looking over a hill and the trees were full of leaves and everything. So it must have been, it, it must have been at the break of a season. And they went into a type live fire thing, right? And it was so sneaky, but they were there for a long time. You know, it reminds me of what's happening right now. Putin is very passive about what he's doing. He's not really gone into anything heavy, right? Believe me, the Russians could cause severe damage. I, I mean severe, both to the USA, to the Ukraine, and other folks around that region. But he's not. He's not. And he keeps utilizing the same line, the same narrative that he's been doing. You know, all these news articles come out. You guys have heard them. Well, Putin's broke and Putin can't manufacture this and Putin can't do that. But the Ukraine is losing and they want more money. Right? Right? But but then you hear a lot of people who are pro-Ukraine. They don't see anything but the Ukraine winning and they put out false information. Wishful thinking. Right? And they keep continuing to say Putin is broke. Putin is this, Putin doesn't have this, They're, you know, the army refuses to do this, that, and the other. If all that were true, Ukraine would have won by now, right? But it's not. Putin is doing what he's doing, very small steps. And he's not really made a big move, which, which, is, which is troublesome. It is, it's troublesome. But now, you take, for example, now, right? You start looking at Poland all these different countries over in that region, right now they're setting up uh, missile defense systems. And offense and defensive missile systems were going up as of uh, about three, four days ago in places where they have not been, which suggests some sort of large offensive. Somebody says Putin has cancer. Yes, yes, Putin died like 20 times, all this kind of stuff that they were putting out there. None of it. None of it took place. And, and it just shows you it's not that the people are intentionally lying about things like that. It's just that it, it, it really shows you what people want to believe. And that's what it shows you, what people want to believe. Remember that. So you don't point fingers and accuse. Yeah, somebody planted the story, but most often people pick up these stories and they run with them. And I know for a fact they will plant stories. Like if, if all of us here, say all of us here, and COT supported a certain political party. They and and they and we spoke to a lot of people every single day. They would have people to come in the chat room or something like that to to drop a story, to drop a some sort of uh, message or something like that. I mean, I get them by email all the time. There are people telling me they try to tell me things, right? But I'm so terrible at it. I have to remain obedient. I do. Um, I don't read anything about world events. I don't do that. I can't do that because it will mess up what, you know, I truly know. I don't want to dovetail. I, don't, I do not want to take somebody else's information and start talking about it because I have no experience with information other people have. I can give you firsthand knowledge, uh, but um, if it's not firsthand, to me, it, it's just not, that's not my role, right? It's not my role. That's for a person who can bring things together. They can give you the the nitty gritty on a bunch of things. They bring things together. That's not me. I'm a specifics person. Okay, so that's where I operate. Anyway, Putin has not done anything major yet. Right now, in the Middle East, or not in the Middle East, but uh, well, in the Middle East too. But but uh, if you look north of north northwest of the Ukraine, um, you you'll see a troubled area where. Nuclear weapons could be used. Okay. Uh, uh, most likely, uh, they're doing something very methodically. Because this is a setup to stop NATO in its tracks. Will Putin use nuclear weapons to stop NATO? You better believe it. But he has to take out certain places first. Right? 
a show of force, think about something. He's not going to use some big, huge nuclear weapon either. There will be death entailed, but but he'll have to do it strategically so that people are forced to react in a specific way, right? There's a law of response in proportion to what the enemy did to you. So if somebody, uh, if they do something to you, to us, we cannot just have an all-out attack. We don't do that. We have a proportional response, as we have. And this is an agreement with the world, uh, proportional response, which means, you know, if, if they hit um, something and it costs Say they kill a soldier or something like that. We'll have a proportional response, but we'll hit some ammo dump or something like that. That's the way it works. And um, But in Putin's case this time, he's got to stop NATO. Him stopping NATO is very important. And I do suspect, I do believe at some point, his th- this slow, steady pace, one morning we're going to wake up, right? We're going to wake up one morning he will have done the ultimate thing. He will have done the ultimate thing, which is going to shock the world, right? It'll shock the world. And at that point, of course, you guys who understand and realize something, you got to understand and realize, as soon as any tactical nuclear weapon is used in any area, it's going to flood the news with people trying to make themselves right. Well, you guys know how people do. They, they'll they print these stories and say, well, we, you know, we told you, and we told you this, and we told you. It's kind of like this, uh, these solar flares, right? These solar flares, they go off, and it was quite massive, more power than most solar flares that came Earth-facing. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, Mike, why did you play that one down? That's what they were asking me while it was happening. I really couldn't explain because I'd have to go into a bunch of scientific jargon. But I was worried about a one specific layer is what I was looking at because it offers uh, you know, that layer is very critical to us. But people were, they were angry at me. I guess they wanted me to say, yes, it's going to blow up the earth or something like that. And I didn't say that. Right? They, they weren't happy with me. They weren't happy. Right? They weren't happy. Anyway, a lot of people wrote things about the solar player. They did. But they were, they sensationalized it, is what they did. And you, you'd read articles like, oh, this is it. This is the kill shot. This is this. That, that wasn't the kill shot. And there wasn't a kill shot. There was no flash. If we ever get a kill shot, all of you are going to notice a flash in the sky. All of you will. You'll notice a flash in the sky. Well, you notice that flash in the sky. Right? You might want to, you got, you got 17, 17 hours. After that flash, you, you had better had everything buckled down. You'll notice a flash in this case. I believe the word of God, we're going to see three flashes, right? So we'll see one, one time in the middle of the night, which will, because when we see that flash, people are going to think it's daytime again. It'll be a flash from the sun. It'd be a powerful emission, right? The second time we're going to see three, three. So, and I'll, I'll go into detail about that a little later now that we can, we actually have a stream to do some things with, but uh, that's what people are going to see. And that's going to be relatively soon. Right. And of course, a lot of people think that uh, if we have a Carrington event that, uh, you know, it's going to knock out power, this, that, and the other, I beg to differ, but that I'll have to explain. There's been a lot of, uh, research especially underground of that very simulation and i'll tell you something it did not come out like most people think it's just like an emp do you guys know there are several types of emps several types not just one type several types do you not also not know that the power companies have buried many lines to run to these facilities and that some people are smart enough to use taps for those buried lines to run things from right so, but when people get a hold of this stuff, right, they have many different reasons. But let's go ahead and face it. We get excited sometimes, right? We do. And and some people are not as, they, they won't hold back or really think about it, right? I like to collect data to actually help people. And uh, somebody says, uh, 37, God bless you, brother. Got anything on Taiwan, Philippines, China? Yes. Yeah, but it's not immediate. It's a next week thing. But you can explain that at 37. I got you covered. 
I got you covered, brother. I've been actually working and working confidently on 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 our site since we have bandwidth. That'll be awesome. But we'll get together on that. Though. Um, but a lot of people they they will expand things because they think it's going to happen. Why? Because they have read something from somebody else. Anyway, that's the nature of our world, right? It's the nature of our world. But if a weapon goes off, can you imagine the stories that will be out there? I can imagine people saying, well, tomorrow they're going to send five others. You know, they have proof they heard from a secret source, this, that, and the other. And it's just not going to take, you know, may not take place like that. But these days, people don't care. They don't care. Right? They don't care anymore. Um, they don't care about that anymore. Right? They just don't, don't care about that anymore. They just care about the next big thing that happens. That's all. Somebody says, uh, Mike, what are your thoughts on heavy metal Christian music? Is it contradiction? I, I listen to music. I do. I like melodies. When it comes to Christian music, uh, you could say I'm more strict than anything. If it's not the word of God, it's not Christian music to me. But I do not like things that are devoted to Lucifer first. And then, you know, it makes its way over. Because I'm going to ask you something. But especially about music, right? Are you listening for the music? Or do you follow the spirit behind the music? Here's what I mean by that. I can listen to all genres of music. Christian music. If it's Christian music, I can listen to all genres. Because some people, they know how to play rock. They know how to play blues. They know how to play this, that, and the other. And from their hearts, they're complimenting the word of God with that music, right? So I can listen to it. Now, but I can also hear people trying to get famous, people trying to make their, a track that is has no basis in biblical truth. Right? I can hear that too, and I will not hear it. I've heard things that people love. I wouldn't even, I'll never play on anything close to me. I'll never do it. I take severe issue with that stuff. That's why I'd rather hear somebody sitting down playing a guitar and some drums or something like that than it goes, I'm not going to a concert. Because if too many people like it, I'll, t- I'll tell you something. I'll just it's a, it's a principle in the Bible, but if too many people like it, how can it be of the living God? How? How can it be of God if too many people like it? And true to form, when a song is just eaten up by people and people love that song, you start listening to it, and it drifts away from all Christian principles. It starts talking about, because Christianity is not some self-help book. That's not what that is. And you have folks who start listening to things that drift away from principles of the living God. They listen to it. They fall for the, there are just some things I just don't, uh, listen, I don't believe man can control the Holy Spirit, for example. I do not. I don't believe in that. How can man direct the Spirit of God? Now, to me, since I was a child, I've got myself in trouble so many times. You can, no man can dictate the Holy Spirit. So why on this earth are there people doing it? Why? Oh, and by the way, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck is not going to come out of your mouth. That's not speaking in tongues. When somebody, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck, some people know different languages. In the Bible, when these men spoke by the Holy Spirit, they spoke the wonderful works of God in every native language, every native tongue that those people were listening to. Even in the Bible, it says, if there be no interpreter, don't don't speak in the spirit. That's what it said. So why would people continue to do that? So I have an issue with that. Here's why I have the issue. Because those people are going to die. That's why. Do you guys understand this is life or death? I mean, real life or death. And see, until you see it with your own eyes, it's still in the area of mystique. It is. I'm telling you now, it's life or death. I've seen that happen. I've seen what darkness can do to those who are not covered. And no one on earth needs to be in that position. And people are not listening. They're not. They don't know what they're playing with. Darkness has done nothing major. And in my mind, men do not know what darkness is. It doesn't matter what a person went through. They don't know what darkness is. Because once you see darkness at work, you'll never, ever take that for granted again. Human beings. Somebody says witchcraft. Eh, that's they call that 
that's fake darkness, entertainment darkness. And the reason why I say that is because people endeavor into those practices not knowing the forces behind it. No, I'm talking about the forces behind it. The real forces behind it. And he who letteth. Right? And the Bible says, he who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then that wicked is going to be revealed. When that happens, I've seen that time in my mind. It's something I pray every single day. I pray I can make a difference in somebody's life so they're not that person sitting in the corner, afraid to breathe. Can you imagine, listen to me, can you imagine a person sitting in the corner of their house? They're afraid to move. They're afraid to breathe. They're afraid to do anything. And they die in that corner, not moving an inch. They're sweating. They're hungry. They don't go use the bathroom. It's all in one place. They're so frightened and so froze. That for 23 days, they stay in that corner till their bones freeze up. They're in pain, they're miserable, but they're so terrified to move. They don't want anything to pick up on them. Can you imagine that? I don't want any of you to be those people. All this time, they've been conditioning people, conditioning people, right, to give up, to give up their authority. Do you understand that's what darkness is doing? See, God is prepared to forgive a person. As soon as they say, yes, Lord, God is already prepared to forgive them. It's that serious. You got to ask yourself, what could be so serious that the creator of this world would send his son to die? That at any given moment, if a person, if they believe and accept that sacrifice, they can be forgiven. What could be so terrible for God to do something so urgent? He even did it at a time when people didn't even understand. You know, in the Bible, it says men will seek death, but will not find it. Men will desire to die, but death will flee from them. There's no escape for what's coming for them. Can you imagine being up there? I'm going to say something that's not, it's not normal. But could you imagine being alive a thousand years and you're not able to die? And I'm not talking about a zombie. No. The inability to die, no matter what the state of your flesh is, life is still in you. So that means your pain is multiplied. Whatever you have going on is multiplied and getting worse. And you do not have an ability to die. Darkness is coming. And Jesus was not joking when he said, no man can work when the night comes. The night is coming. And people are playing games. The more serious it gets, I've also noticed, the more person-to-person affairs we have in the world, meaning it's really bad now. Now we have this political problem, which is consuming everybody in it so much so. That's all they talk about. They're not talking about the principles of the word of God. They're not talking about being anchored in truth so much that you would never have an outburst. I'm talking about that. Somebody says, how does AI play into the end times? What spirit is AI? I I don't believe AI is a spirit at all. Here's what I believe. AI is indeed man-made. But like most things, what does, what's Satan so good at? Let me share it with you. Satan will have people build a city, right? A city. Now, there's only a few people that carry the true motive of why that city was built. Nobody else knows. Listen to me carefully at the Tower of Babel. Do you think everybody knew what they were doing? Or do you think a few knew what they were doing? In government, for example. Let me give you a scenario with a president or congressman. You ready? Who doesn't know anything. You get an honest person out there. They love their country. They're patriotic. They served in the military. Right? They have, they have every qualification to be out there. Somebody's talking to them. Follow me on this. Somebody's talking to them, telling them what's happening to our country, to have them believe in a specific narrative. They run for Congress. They get elected. They start fighting for the people with those ideologies somebody else planted in them. And they're honest. Let's say they're honest. And these honest people, right? Let's take, for example, the wall. These honest people are fighting against the wall because they believe in the cruelty of humanity. And that's what someone showed them. How families can come over the border and a 
parent can lose their children, how the people can force people to go to the border. And if they don't cross over and make some money, they kill the rest of their family over there. So you have a person wrestling with this ideology. So somebody else comes up and says, to, well, do you know some of these people coming over are trying to do harm to our country? But see, that congressman was not shown that. The congressman was shown a different narrative. So they put that guy over there. Now, this guy's in his office. He's working with all honesty. He's not trying to trick anybody. That's not what he's doing. He's working with all honesty. Everybody else sees this person. They say, well, this guy's an idiot. The guy keeps working. Why? Because he's immune. Why? Because in his heart, he's doing all he can do based upon the information he has or she has. Then you have those on the opposite side who have been shown something else, and that's all they see. Right? They're honest people trying to do honest things, given a different narrative. Every single last one of them has a handler, somebody who has fed them something, somebody who nurtured and groomed them to make them believe what they believe. And they get up there and standing in honesty. It's important that they're honest. They need people who are honest. Why? Because you have discernment. Every human being has discernment. You can tell when a person is outright lying. You can tell when a person is up to something. They have to have that person be honest. So I'll tell you again, it's those behind the curtain that are pulling strings all over the place. And this narrative that they're doing, do you not understand? It's been in play this entire time. See, they understand you can't build a kingdom overnight. You can't do that. Can't you see step by step by step by step? They've been doing this. And listen to me. How long has Satan been in existence? I'll give you the short answer. For as long as humanity has been also. So all this time he's been planning for the end days. Can you imagine the mindset of an entity who's probably been around for millions of years? Right? That means this last 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 years, whatever it is, is, is like a day to that entity. He's working slowly and methodically to set up his kingdom, to set up all these different mindsets so that when the end, when these things begin to happen, people no longer believe in the Most High. So that people will, in, in the Bible it tells us that people will try and fight God. Now, you know, you've really got to warp somebody's mind for that. That means they're going to believe. In Revelation, we read that people believe in God and they blame everything on him. They blaspheme him. You see, that's why Babylon came out the way it was. Now, God can use anything he so desires. And God allows and permits darkness to work in the first place. But for the folks who deny the covering of Christ, there's no way they can escape. What's coming is hungry. And it's always been hungry. And can, it can never be satisfied. Nothing will ever appease it. If it consumed every human being on this planet, it would then start to consume itself. Hell was made for it. It has to be locked away into an outer darkness. And every man who agrees with that darkness will also join it in that captured and hell dimension. Which is why hell enlarges itself, because it was never made for humanity. Hell was not made for you. Hell was made for the one who attempts to deceive you. But don't think a person can be deceived by way of a trick. A person can only be deceived if they have that same desire lurking within them. In order for somebody to deceive me with a drug, I have to want the effects of that drug. Do you hear me? I cannot be tricked or deceived into taking anything if they said, hey, Mike, take this pill, and it's going to make your legs detach. Said, well, I don't want that thing. You can't trick me into getting that right. But say I had a bad migraine for a month, and somebody says, hey, take this pill. and get rid of that migraine in five minutes. Oh, thank you. What is it? So you take it and ask later. You don't care what it is. I mean, the guy that gave it to you is the doctor, right? Right? You don't care. You don't care at that point but if you don't have a migraine. If somebody tries to give you something, it doesn't matter who it is, you're going to say, wait a minute, I don't need that. So please keep those things in mind. Keep those things in mind. 
Somebody says, Mike, so what about the vaccines for children? God covers children. God covers kids. I've had every vaccine on the planet. Probably. Right? I have. Nothing wrong with me. But, but they already know. Listen to me carefully. They already know what's going to affect you. They already know that. True to form, do you understand that some of the tests that took place in the 60s and 70s were to get rid of at least 20% of the African-American population here in the USA? The tests with mosquitoes. Do you know that Hispanics endured a similar test with beer? Do you know that? Do you know that specific Caucasians with a gene marker? The next experiment was on them. Made them go cuckoo crazy. Do you know that? Do you know there are ongoing tests right now from your grocery stores, fat foods, restaurants? Hmm? So everybody is drinking bottled water. Are they, are, are people nuts? Why do we always say that, you know, they're sneaking stuff into every single thing out there? So we, what do we say? Well, I'm going to go get some bottled water. That's why I recommend Christian organizations. If you want to buy food, at least they're bound by some conviction, right? If they're a Christian organization, you fare far better off than going to a grocery store and you're buying something because of a label. The same store you went into that says that says organic is sitting right next to another box, right? That says genetically modified or biologically modified. And chances are it's the exact same one. Do you not know that they tested what they test it was 18 brands of drinking water only to find that all of them or similar or the same as tap water. So people get a, a different comfort by drinking bottled water, but they don't have a laboratory at home. You can't run a test to see what microbes are in there. You can't run a test to see what chemicals are in there. You can't do a reactive test to see if anything is in there that's going to really damage or hurt. You can't do that. You can't do that. But crazy people like me do. You better believe it. That's why I'm not eating the bread. Told you I got a problem with the bread. I'm not eating the bread. I'm not doing it. There's no way you can put something under an iron test to see the chemical chains, make sure that everything is okay, and then these long strands are in the bread. I'm sorry. Nope. No. Because that gets to other people. I'm not doing that so I can have it, right? So I can be uh, clear of it. You got to remember there are a lot of uncovered people in this world. They have not accepted Christ yet. They're playing around, torn around, and they're prone to these things. Any Christian out there is not prone to these things unless you have rejected your Messiah. Your Messiah is involved in everything in your life. Hope you know that. Okay, questions. I just ignored you guys. I got started on a rant. Forgive me for that. That was, that was a rant. We're supposed to be doing Revelate. Well, I guess you could say we're doing some of it. We do have a summary to perform on Revelation. We do. We do. My brother saw two moons, but I did not. Was there a second moon or does have a problem? With it? Nope. All too often, two people can stand beside each other. One can see an object that the other can't see. I've been in a group of people where everybody saw the same blue light. Right? Think of this same blue light. Um, hover is like you could reach up and touch it. Right? Those same people cannot tell you to this day that they saw that blue light, but all of us saw that blue light. But we cannot say we saw that blue light. And the reason why is because every time you think about the blue light, it is like something is something is mixing up your thoughts in your mind. So there's no. There's no concreteness to it, enough that a person would say it. Also, I've seen people stand beside each other, and two people saw a cylindrical object, nobody else saw a thing. These two people were convinced they saw a cylindrical object, nobody else saw a thing. And that's the nature of the spirit realm. That's how you know things are spiritual. When you have two people that can see it, right? Now, these UFO folks will say, well, it's because, you know, they got optic implants and so they can see in a special range, right? No. In the spirit realm, spirits will often interact with a person first. It'll begin to alter their perception. The folks, remember something. Spirits are perfect. They're, they're good. They're very efficient at altering perception, right? 
For example, if somebody is angry at you and they're compromised spiritually, they're not going to hear everything you say. They're going to hear every offensive thing you say, which is why when you talk to them, they get madder and madder. See, you understand that, don't you? And then when you go back to talk to them, they don't remember the conversation. They'll point out all the bad stuff. So you've got to remember that, right? Spirits can alter perception. They can cause a person to see or hear what they want that person to see or hear, right? That's why they hear the bad stuff you say, not the, not the balanced thing, not the good thing. They hear the offensive thing. That's what they hear. So that's why you don't try to sit there and, and continue with that thing. Don't do that. When, when, when people begin to argue with you, understand that principle. Understand how these spirits work. Have an understanding of that and calm yourself down and say, well, I know what I'm talking to. And you go and pray for that person. Don't engage with a person. Another step. Don't do it. Don't do it. For the sake of the person, that's when you act in all humility. And then you go right after that spirit. See, you have a right by the living God to go after that spirit. I hope you know that. I hope you know anywhere you find a spirit that has compromised a person, you have a right you have a right to intercede. You have a right to reject that spirit. Do you know that? You have a right. What can diminish that right? It's when you attack the person. When you attack the person, you let the spirit go. And when that spirit goes, it's going to mess up other people's lives. God gave you an absolute right to evict that spirit. Remember something. You do not war against flesh and blood. Your fight is not with the other person. Your fight is with what just used that person. What has been influencing that person. That's what you're here for. That's why before you get into an argument, you get that strange sensation. See, when you're just in a room with another person, that's one thing. But when something else is with that person, then inside of you, what are the telltale signs? And you'll say, uh-oh, let me, it's coming. Let me get ready for this. Oftentimes, you know, before the person ever gets there. Why? Because you can discern the spirit. But when you discern the spirit, all you see is the person. And you don't know these principles. That's where you get all mi mixed up. Right? And you can hurt yourself doing that. In other words, if you accuse that person, now you're out of obedience with the living God. Now you're sowing seeds that you must reap. And so Satan loves to keep your life in this turmoil. He does. He does. Remember that. See that these are things, on, in all honesty, right, that all of us who study the word should go over these things to arm people. Because if people were properly armed, they wouldn't fall for these things. They wouldn't do it. Part of my calling. I thank God I'm able to to know that. I well, thank God for that. Anyway. I totally forgot the question I did. I went way off the... See, I did that again. And it's already 9.03. Why do I feel like the night just started? Anybody else feel that way? It, it feels like it just started. i tell you what I will do, though. You guys got to help me, though. I'm, I'm telling you right now, you guys got to help me. Scientifically, right? Because I know things just started. I want you guys to hear me on something. Listen, I know we're in the, we're in the path. Now, you guys may not agree with my method, with some of the writings... But I'm telling you right now that what I post to the website from this point forward, what you're going to see, right, is something the Lord has pressed upon me. Just know that because we're in a time. So whether people are prepared or not, I've got to go forward with what the Lord has given me. That means I'm going to be using, I'm going to be asking people certain things. I'm not doing it by myself. I'm not one of those people. In fact, I'd rather vanish into the background. Right? But I need, this is when the call becomes very important. Like this solar activity that just took place. Hear me on this. You don't think that needs to be studied? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It needs to be studied. Why? It's about to happen again at least three or four more times. They're not going to be a slight I already know we're going to go through a time where it's going to be probably 20 times greater magnitude than what we just went through. And this one will have destructive consequences. I keep 
saying that the consequences are coming. I know I sound like I'm beating the same drum. But if the Lord gave you something, wouldn't you, wouldn't you have to be honest with it? I mean, I live in this world too, so if it doesn't happen, I'm the dummy, right? I'm the dodo. I'm not going to put that on anybody else. I'm the dummy, but I'm not going to wait on anybody else either. I know this is my time to get things out there for you guys, whether anybody else moves on it or not. I've got to move in truth. It's kind of like if you believe in revelation, but you make no preparations, right, for anything in revelation, how can, how can a person say they believe? A person who believes that the rapture is going to happen in less than a week? You mean to tell me they didn't, they did not, they didn't make preparations for their own departure? Why would they even mention something they're not even prepared to go through themselves? If I believed, if I believed I were leaving this week, and tomorrow's not promised to anybody, but if I was like everybody else and I believed I was leaving this week, you don't think I would start getting everything arranged? I would be preparing my departure if I actually believe. So I'm telling you something. When we actually believe in anything, we are changing our lives to fit that belief. When we're just talking and we do nothing, how then can we say we truly believe? I know the time that's coming. I know it is. I'm making all preparations every day of the rest of my life until I can't. I know people are going to need things. I know people are not going to know about what's coming. Some of you may not know about what's coming. You may not believe it. That doesn't matter. It's not going to discourage me. I have to make certain appropriations for those who won't believe and those who do believe. I'm not waiting on anybody. I'm not asking for anybody's consent or consensus. I'm going forward with what the Lord has given me because I know it. I believe. And I've, I've lived my life this way. God has never steered me wrong. I have steered me wrong. There have been times when I got a little overzealous. When I tried to speed things, the best word of mistakes happened from, but God has never faltered on what he's actually given me. I have faltered in preparing. There was a time God showed me so many times something was going to take place. I ignored it. Right? Because nobody else would confirm it. That thing took place and I was the mule. I was the mule. That's not going to happen again. There were things God has given me a forewarning about before it ever, before I ever got involved with it. He gave me a forewarning. I ignored the warning, got involved anyway. It was a disaster. So I don't take those routes anymore. I don't do that. I don't do that. Somebody says, Mike, is what? Is psychosis demonic? And if a person goes to rehab and is free of a drug, does that mean the spirit is gone too? Listen to me. A drug, when you take a drug, the motive for that thing is everything. Do you hear me? The motive. Listen to me carefully. If a person is in the hospital and they take a pill for pain, there's no demon attached to that pain pill because the motive for taking the pill is legitimate. Do you hear me? But if you're taking a pill to cope with the world, then, then, then you're, you've stopped your growth. You've stopped it. You stopped it. And then people eventually get hooked and they won't say anything. Now you're lying about why you're taking it. And it's still a lie, right? So it's a falsehood. Now you're lit. He, the Satan will tie people up like this. Listen to me. Because it's, it's really no big deal to the world if somebody says, oh, well, I'm not addicted to anything, but they're taking something. But let me tell you what's really happening. What actually happens is a person will get used to living a lie without conviction in that area. And it spreads like a cancer and it starts to eat up many areas of your life. If a person will say, hey, I started taking this, you know, because I hurt my leg or something like that. And now I'm hooked and I don't know how to get off. Now you're back in the realm of honesty. And that's when that's when solutions come. Solutions will never come. When the motivation. Is bound in a lie. Do you guys see the difference? You see the difference? You guys see? So it's not actually the thing itself. That's not it. It's not the tangible thing. It's not that. It's what we become as a result of that tangible thing. And what we do to keep 
or to repel that tangible thing. Because they're all too often, like people who are addicted to things will deny, they don't go around telling everybody they're addicted. And rightfully so, they can't do that. But have you noticed that anybody who's addicted, any of you who are addicted to a pain medication, whether you're a veteran, whatever the case, not one of us can judge you in here, first of all. We, nobody can judge your life. Nobody. Nobody. So, but have you ever noticed there's always somebody coming to you to make you tell the same lie over and over? Come on now. In other words, you'll say, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be in that room. And here comes somebody. Oh, yeah, man, you're taking that so-and-so? I bet you're hooked on them, too, huh? And that they cause this natural repulsion because you don't want to be fully open to everybody about that, right? So it's always an agent sent spiritually to make you tell that same lie over and over again. Haven't you guys noticed that? Have you guys noticed that? These are These are the tactics of spirits. That work very well against believers and non-believers too, right? But um, I'll say it again. When you step into that realm of truth, right? It's a different, I'm telling you it's a different story. I'm telling you it's a different story. You want to break your addiction? Step in truth first. It does not mean you go write a book and tell everybody that you're addicted to so-and-so. That's not what it means. Step out. Step out of that complacency. Living. And in full agreement without conviction of the lie in the first place. Because what Satan has effectively done is had you step in the darkness with one foot, but you're striving to be in the light with the other, right? But you're not moving. You're not moving. He has you stuck on purpose. Only when you move does he rear his head. To step into that realm of truth is to be open about how it started in the first place. Now listen to me. What that means is, it's going to feel like you're going to lose all your status. It's going to feel like you may lose some respect. But it only feels that way. Because once you, listen, you're in a path right now where you're denying something. You're, you're holding up a certain type of lie that nobody even cares about. So in that path where your one foot is stuck in a lie, you're going to have false, false thoughts, false scenarios come into your life time to step out of it once you share if somebody comes and say hey you stuck on that yeah i am i started taking this because of the leg thing and now i'm stuck on this thing that's my thing you know i'm stuck but i'm praying to the lord i'll be delivered see once you do that satan goes oh shoot i'm losing it why because you just spoke a truth he cannot hang around you because once you step back in that realm of truth, your father is involved. The angels are involved. The heavens are involved. I'm not telling you something I read about. I'm telling you something I know. I know. See, that's why I can tell you guys God will deliver. I know about God's deliverance. I also know the little dirty tricks that Satan will play. But I don't want you, I don't want anybody to fall for. I've been there, done that. You want free? Step out of that motivational lie that he gives, that, that origination lie. To deny everything and act like, you know, that's everybody else's problem, not mine. I'm free. I'm good. I'm doing this, that, and the other. Step out of that. Normally, when you step out of, well, in all cases, when you step out of something like that, it exposes everybody false in your life. Yes, I said you have false people in your life that cling to you spiritually. Listen, they cling to you. They don't even know why. Let me tell you why. Because Satan has assigned agents to you to keep you in that lie. So certain people will come alongside you and they'll like the lie you're telling. And because of them, because you don't want to lose them, you'll keep telling the lie. Don't let him trap you like that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because those people, let me tell you something. Anybody who clings to you spiritually, by those dark forces, they're not even themselves. You don't want anybody to befriend you. That's not themselves. They're being coerced by power. They don't understand. That's why I said, by you, you're going to lose some friends that were never your friends in the first place. You don't want anybody near you who God did not put in your path in the first place. Those people are destructive and they destroy those are the ones that cause you to compromise. They like you when you're in error 
with holiness. And they don't like you when you start talking about holiness. And you know, all of you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's time to move. It's time to move. Time for some folks to be free. Huh? God has given you a new family. He's giving you a brand new family. You're not going to lose a thing. I'll also tell you something else. Your future path of blessings. You can't have it. You know you can't have it. That's for you. That's for you. And it's a blessing. Listen to me carefully. A blessing will never be mocked. It itself will not be mocked. A person's not going to call a blessing some kind of curse. If you were to acquire what the Lord has for you right now, you would cause ruin with it. Why? Because of that small thing. Are you hearing me? There are certain things you cannot have until you're fully back in the light. Now, once you're fully back in the light, all of it's yours anyway. Why do you think you can't progress? Now you know what it is. God cannot release it because you're not in full agreement with him. Do you hear me? That's why things are stalled. It's time to get unstalled. Must get it moving, shall we? Folks, and I'm telling you this because, listen, I'll say it again. I didn't read this. I know this. I know this. Now I thank God for certain wisdoms I have that are real. When I was going through it, I wouldn't wish that upon the worst human in the world. But everything I went through yielded something. I wouldn't go through that knowingly. So, but I went through it anyway. That's why Satan can't fool me too easy. Right? Liars can't lie to me. Because I can see it. Tricksters can't trick me. Satan cannot bedazzle me. Demons fail at luring me. And I'm not giving a challenge telling you what's real. And it's all because when you're tricked by the enemy and you find out it's the enemy, you remember the trick and you have been armed with something. Anytime you face darkness and survive, you have been empowered with knowledge of what one of his weapons are. I'll say it again. I knew, right, every sin I ever committed was premeditated. Nothing with me was accidental. I chose every path. So I've already been on that side. I've seen just about everything he has on that side. Somebody says, can you give dot points on how to test the spirit? Any spirit from the living God will always edify Jesus of Nazareth. Doesn't matter who it is. It will edify Jesus of Nazareth. It will, and it's all business. There are no jokes or any of that stuff. No, it's all business. It is absolute sobriety. These other spirits will promote your self-power. They're the ones that tell you, oh, you look beautiful, you look this, and you can be that, and you can have this, and all of it's tangible nonsense. Anything of our Father is about the Father's business. And that business is salvation, which means there's no time for play. It's life or death. It's immediate. They will lift up the name of Christ. They will compliment his name. Hmm? So you can rebuke, and you know what? When I didn't know, I rebuked everything. If it was of the Lord, it would lift up the name of Joshua. Well, let me say this because I have to, right? You ready? Because somebody just said something about the pronouncement of Joshua. Let me tell you something. Every word in the Bible is made. The words we speak are from a human language. We pronounce based on what was given to us by other humans, not holiness. Yahshua HaMashiach is just something we identify in another language with Christ. But they're just vibrations coming out of your mouth. The true identification of what you speak is in the heart. You host a spiritual language. You do. It does not matter. The vibrations that come out of your mouth, it matters what you associate with those vibrations. So whoever that person is who just thought, well, that pronunciation was incorrect and it won't evoke the name of Christ. You do not speak when you're dreaming. And spirits don't have big lips. They don't need oxygen, lungs, or anything else. God gave us the power of speech. 
because we are forbidden from knowing the thoughts of each other. Oh, somebody put holy anger. I don't believe in holy anger. I don't believe in that. Anger within itself is dissatisfaction. One person's dissatisfaction. There's nothing holy about that. If I'm dissatisfied with something, that's my problem. And God's anger is more holy than the most righteous act we could ever perform. How about that? So we have no context for God's anger except the aftermath of it. We can't even see the perfection in that. I will never take an attribute of the living God and equate that to any attribute that we have. There's no way we can house the interpretation of even who God is or what he is. We simply know he's our father and we can trust that. But as far as identification, we cannot name him. We hold no power over him. Nor can we contain the vastness of who he is, of what he is. We simply know that he is. That's why he said, I am that I am. And in so he spoke truthfully. Hmm? Somebody says, Mike, what about uh, someone that's struggling with being not married? I don't think I'm meant to be. I'm trying to accept it. I'll tell you something. All of us have a challenge of the flesh we must overcome. And it turns out to overcome that challenge of flesh is to unlock you are spiritually. It is true. Everybody is not made to be without another person. Everybody is not made that way. Right? And the Bible says, better to be married than to burn with that lust and then eventually lose your soul because you end up committing adultery and fornication over and over again. But go about it the right way. Go about it the right way. In other words, ask your father to send you a compliment. But hear me on this. Don't think for one moment some other person is going to make you happy. It doesn't work that way. That is not the way of the Lord. That is the word of philosophers in the earth. A person can come alongside and compliment what you already have within you, but they cannot make you happy. Have all of your contentment bound within the most high. Realize the time you live in. Now, some of you are kept back from the very things you want the most because you don't understand how late in the calendar it is. So, for example, let me give you an example. Suppose at the end of this month, the water event happens. A week later, the sun scorches the earth. Society is thrown out of the window. Governments collapse. Then people will understand and say, wow, now I know why God held those things back because it was over and I couldn't see it. That's right. Because you can't see it. You can't see it. See, all too often we think that there's going to be 10 more years, going to be five more years. Let me reiterate this. Tomorrow is promised to no man. Let me give you something else I'll reiterate. Jesus said these are the last times 2,000 years ago. Oh, my. That means you're at. You're already in the door. Forget at the door. You're in the door. Jesus said these are the last times. Can you imagine that? Jesus said in the book of Revelation, the time is at hand. It's already happening. He said that 2,000 years ago. Jesus said that the end would come when people are buying and selling, marrying, giving into marriage. Listen, listen. And I'm talking about an end to us because when the Messiah returns, that's it. He said, he said in the same way, he said, they'll, they'll buy and sell, marry, being given into marriage. And he said, until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, when the Son of Man comes, those who are alive at that time, they will be caught up with him in the air, despite what people believe. If the coming of the Son of Man is close, and so is the liberation of God's children on the earth, a great many of them, unless God has told you that you're going to be here in some of the horrific moments. So for all those who believe that everybody's going to be taken up and nobody will face anything, no, God has given some people the insight that they have to go through a bit more. He's already communicated that to those people. Some won't, some will. But we will never dictate that. All those seeking to escape today are unwilling to finish the race in a fullness. Do you hear me? And you could be in trouble. So don't put your mind 
are escaping, but have an understanding that God knows what he's doing. He's not incompetent. And Jesus will take whom he takes. He is not incompetent. Leave that up to him, to the one who controls it. Set your mind on finishing this race and finish it well. It is not given to the swift. So set your mind here. God has you here on this earth. Set your mind on the task here and do your best. Do your best. The Lord will not fail to get whom he gets. You don't have to worry about that. There are so many people who worry about that. Just stop worrying about that. Those who seek to escape right now are not doing anything. They have folded their arms and they have stopped running this race. They're not going with the Lord. The Lord has already said that. Those who seek to save their lives are going to lose it. So if you folded your arms and you began to persecute your brothers and your sisters, you're not going with the Lord. You're going where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Set your mind on the race here where you are. God put you in a dark place on this earth. That's why your families are the way they are. That's why you came from where you came from. You're a light. Why would he set you in the middle of a city full of lights? That's not where he set you. If you're made to be a light, don't you think he set you in the darkness and that's why you're a light? You're sent here to overcome all things through Christ, not by yourself through Christ. You don't have to worry about him getting you. He will never abandon his children. He will not fail to raise us up at the last day. That is secure. But let your heart be on the gospel here. People here need you. They're waiting on you. God sent you here for a specific cause and a purpose. He's helped fulfill it. He's liberated. He liberated us through other people. So will he liberate others through you. There's a work to be done. There's a work to be done. A great work to be done. Folks, I'm going to see you guys next time we talk here at COT. Now listen, I'll say it again. I have to do what I have to do. I don't want you to feel like you're left behind either. So I just gave you a heads up. I'm in the seasons of acting on things. Things are coming to, they're piling up. This is when all of God's children come into play. They're going to be needed. Even I'll be calling upon some of God's children. And I'm telling you now, it doesn't matter who likes them or not. I trust what the Lord has given me and the calling he's assigned to them. This is not going to be for sure. Very soon, that's going to be painfully obvious to a great many. No, what we're doing here in this place, we're doing for real. Hope you understand that. It's not for entertainment. And for a long time, I was separated from all that entertainment. Have you noticed? For meeting the expectations of the entertainment realm. No, not going that route. But now it's time to work. It's time to go to work. And I hope that you all are ready as well. Collectively, let's do a good work for the Lord and his established gospel. With that, I'm going to say thank you all. God bless each of you. Take note. Take note. Speed is on now. Speed. The 51-day countdown is mine. It's for me. That's for me. When it says link for donations, check with the Council of Time homepage. Or unless somebody else has. But listen to me. Listen to me, folks. Listen to me. Can you hear me on this? I know we have just got everything you know, upgraded, and yes, we have monthly things for that, and yeah, we're going to get busy here, right? Do me a favor. Don't withhold from your family and give to COT. I don't want anybody to do that. God says charity starts at home. The Lord says do not withhold your hand from your own flesh. Do things decent and in order. Can you please do that? Do we need things? Of course. But I'm telling you, don't give to COT what your family needs. Okay? Don't do that.
do that because don't do that. Don't do that. Let's do things decent and in order. God bless each of you. And let's get let's get started. Let's get set up, everybody. God bless you. I'll see you guys next time right here at the Council of Time. God bless. 37, expect communication within the next, um, probably about the next 10 hours. Okay? God bless you guys. I'll see you next time right here at COT.